All right, so today I'm in New York and I'm going to be extracting the information of all the Italian restaurants in this city. For each restaurant, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to extract the information that I can retrieve from uh, the Google Maps search result. Uh, but also, I'm going to enrich that search result with information that I can extract from the business website. So things are like emails, uh, phone numbers, and social media accounts. Um, now, if we go on Google Maps here and we search for Italian restaurants in New York, what this will give us is some results, right, that are very accurate. So we have uh, a list here of Italian restaurants, right? It's very clear that these are all Italian restaurants. A uh, good number of reviews, right? So this is a good start, uh, a good list to start with. But this is definitely not the entire list of Italian restaurants in New York. Like if we scroll up a little bit, you can see that it kind of focuses around this area only, right? So I'm guessing that these are maybe the most popular restaurant, most popular Italian restaurants in New York. Um, but it, it kind of like skips over the other parts of the city, right? So uh, we, we might assume that there's no Italian restaurants in Brooklyn, which obviously is not right. Uh, so if we search in this area, zoom in a little bit more, you can see that it starts coming up with search results in this area. If we go here and search this area, we're going to we're going to get some results in this area. So we cannot rely on just the general search here, Italian restaurants in New York because that will only give us a small number of results. Uh, and the and the reason it does that is because um, Google Maps will only give you a maximum of 120 uh, results per search. No matter what what search you perform on Google, on Google Maps, it will always give you a maximum of 120 results. So if our goal is to um, extract every single Italian restaurant in New York, what we need to do is narrow down the searches, right? So we have to go into each part of the city here and perform a search for Italian restaurants in that part of the city, right? another one here, and then another one here, and so on, right? It has to be multiple searches because then we are kind of telling it that it needs to give us as many restaurants as it, as it can find that meet this criteria, Italian restaurants, in that part of the city, right? So that's how we are able to then uh, uh, extract as many restaurants as possible. Uh, now, you also have to use your intuition and your general knowledge about the city. Um, some cities will, will, no matter how narrow your search is, will not have more than 120 restaurants, right? So you have to, you have to kind of think a little bit, like do some research, find out how crowded the city is. For example, we know that um, New York is a very crowded city, right? it's a well-known thing. There's tons of businesses, tons of restaurants in the city. So um, you kind of like, you, you got to use your intuition. My intuition tells me that in this, like um, uh, in this part of the city that I'm looking at right here, will not have more than 120 restaurants. I could be totally wrong, but it's my guess, right? Um, if you know the city better, then you might say, well, actually, in this part of the city, in the financial district here, there is tons and tons of Italian restaurants, right? So um, you might want to maybe perform a very narrowed search in this area and then a less narrowed search in this area of the map, right? It, it depends how well you know the city, right? But I don't know the city very well, so I'm going to... Um, I'm going to perform a search at this level right here. And by level, I mean the level of zoom, right? So how zoomed in, zoom, zoomed in I, I am. Um, so I'm going to do a search here. Then I'm going to go down. I'm, I'm going to go up a little bit, do a search here. Um, go up a little bit, do another search here and so on. That's how I'm planning on uh, doing my scraping. Now, when it comes to actually uh, scraping the search results, I'm going to be using Phantom Buster. So Phantom Buster is a scraper tool, and it has a really good Google Maps scraper. 
If you want to uh, try it out, I'm going to put a link for it in the description. It has a free trial. Uh, it is an affiliate link, so um, please use it if you're if you if you're planning out if you're planning on uh, trying out Phantom Buster. If you end up purchasing it, then I'm going to get a small um, I'm going to get a small commission, which uh, really supports me. So uh, I thank you in advance for for using my link. Um, but yeah, this is how we're going to set it up. So. Uh, let me go here and delete this. I'm gonna I'm gonna guide you through the entire process. So um, this is what you'll see when you sign up, right? Uh, and you're gonna click here on Use a Phantom, and then you want to search for Google Maps uh, in the box here, and you will see all the phantoms that are available for uh, Google Maps. So there's actually two. There is this one here, which will only give you the, the data that, the data you can extract from Google Maps. And then this one here, it will actually, these, this is a combination of two phantoms, one that will extract the search results from Google Maps and one that will then enrich each search result with additional information that it can find on the on the company's website. So this will include emails, phone numbers, and social media information. So I'm actually gonna be using this one here. And what I need to do is provide it with a URL. So this is the URL uh, of the search I want to perform. But as I mentioned, I wanna perform multiple searches. I don't want to just have one search. I want to go through each part of the city and perform a search for that part of the city. Um, so what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be providing it with a URL of a Google Sheet. So you want to sign into your, to your Gmail account, uh, then uh, create a Google Sheet. Uh, in the Google Sheet, you wanna have um, a name for the column. This can be anything you want. Um, and then in each one of these rows, I'm gonna provide, uh, I'm, I'm gonna add a, a Google Maps search URL. Right, so this is what will instruct the phantom to scrape that part of the city. So I'm gonna go here on the map. I'm starting off with this area. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more here, okay? I'm gonna start with this, the area here, and I'm gonna copy the URL. I'm gonna paste it here. I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna scroll up a little bit. I'm gonna copy the URL. I'm gonna paste it here. I'm gonna scroll up a little bit, copy the URL, paste it here, and so on, right? That's how you do it. And the reason that we keep copying the URL is because the URL changes, right? If you if you see here, this uh, look at the coordinates, right? If we scroll up a little bit, the coordinates change. If we scroll, uh, scroll up a little bit, the coordinates change again, right? So this is how the phantom knows which area to scrape each time. Um, and then if you if you narrow down your search, so if you zoom in, the thing that changes is the Z axis, right? That's your, that's your zoom. Um, okay, so yeah, like what I would do is go through each part of the city and end up with a massive list of um, URLs here that I can provide to Phantom Buster. Um, now, once you have your, your list of URLs, what you want to do is click on share here and change this option from the restricted to anyone with the link, right? You wanna make this uh, Google Sheet publicly accessible and you wanna copy the link, go to Phantom Buster and then paste that link here. Then you wanna go to spreadsheet settings and then select your column, right? So that's the name of, the, my, of my column right here. Uh, click save, and then uh, you want to uh, set the number of results that you wanted to um, to scrape per search. As I mentioned, the maximum number of results that Google Maps will uh, will provide per search is 120, so that's the maximum number you can have here. Um, for this example, I'm actually going to make it 10, just so because. If I do 120 and I perform three searches, that's gonna take too long. Uh, I don't wanna make that the video too long, so I'm just gonna do 10 per uh, search. Um, and then here is where I select what 
data points I want to extract from the company's website. So this is actually the setup for the second phantom, right? As I mentioned, there are two phantoms that work together. This is the second one. So after after it extracts the, the Google Map search result, it will then perform a search on the company's website. And this is what, I'm, what I wanted to, to search for. I wanted to search for email addresses, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, and phone numbers. For the phone numbers, I also need to provide a format. And since we're in the United States, I'm gonna select the United States there, save, and we're ready to go. So now I'm going to just rename my phantom really quickly. Google Maps search, uh, Google Maps, Google Maps plus contact data scraper. Save. And I'm going to click to enable the flow. So this will begin the, the scraping. And yeah, you, you just kind of leave it do its thing. Um, depending on how many searches you wanted to perform and depending on how many uh, results you wanted to extract per search, the amount of time it will take will vary. And you don't need to leave this open, like you can just, just exit and come back later. Uh, it's a cloud-based tool, so it will just do its thing behind the scenes. And once it's done, then you will see your results here. Um, so I'm gonna pause the video and come back once this is uh, ready. All right, so it has completed the uh, search. So uh, we have a total of 23 locations. Now, even though I performed three searches and I told it to extract 10 results per search, um, since the, uh, you know, the, the areas were uh, very close together, you know, it's very likely that some of those searches you know, included duplicated records, included duplicated results, right? So um, it makes sense that it's 23 locations in total. Uh, now, out of those 23 locations, uh, 21, uh, it was able to, to scrape the websites of 21 of them. And I'm seeing here in the results that some did not have a website, right? So that makes sense. Uh, and then from those 21 websites, it managed to find... Uh, 18 the, the the contact information of 18 uh, businesses right so here we see the results so uh, there's three pages but I can actually view 30 results per page right so this is everything so we have the um, the 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 status we have the title so the name of the restaurant we have the website the phone number um, the email address that it was able to find on the website, we have uh, a Facebook page, a U, uh, an Instagram page, and some of them also have a Twitter page. But yeah, this is these are the results. They look quite good. Uh, and then we can also download this as a CSV. So I can click here. It will download the CSV file, uh, and I can then go into Google Maps. I can create a new sheet here, and I can import that upload, it's called result.csv, and I'm gonna insert, uh, replace current sheet, okay, import, there we go. So this is the, uh, this is the data we have collected. These, these are the column names. So yeah, now you can easily use this data for any purpose you want. All right, so that was the um, the process of scraping Italian restaurants in New York. Um, if you want to try at Phantom Buster, the link will be in the description. And uh, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Uh, I'll do my best to help you out. Uh, and also, if you have any suggestions, any feedback for future videos, uh, then also let me know. Um, yeah, with that said, I'll see you on the next video. Thank you.